So I want to talk a little bit today, you know, after listening to uh, ECHA and the Commission talk about mixture assessment factors, uh, broad grouping of substances to ban them under restrictions, I want you to think that, well, that the U.S. is also thinking about some of these issues. And so I decided to talk about EPA's approaches to cumulative risk assessments. How does this play on concept? Well, this map is very interesting. It's actually uh, an 85-mile stretch uh, from uh, Baton Rouge to New Orleans in Louisiana. Now, you may, I think you were at uh, ChemCon New Orleans if you went to ChemCon America a number of years ago, but that's, a, that's an area in Louisiana. It's been nicknamed uh, by the press and NGOs as Cancer Alley. Uh, why? Well, there's 200 or so chemical companies in this 85-mile stretch and there is uh, increased incidence of various types of cancer to the populations that are living in, in this, in this uh, area. Now, since I represent a lot of those companies, my position is there's no causation associated between the exposure and, and, uh, and illness. But in any event, it's been nicknamed by NGOs and uh, the press as Cancer Alley. Now, the Biden administration uh, has actually uh, announced something which the press has nicknamed a cancer moonshot. Uh, why is it called cancer moonshot? Well, you may remember that John F. Kennedy uh, in, in uh, uh, 1962 uh, announced an initiative that the U.S. would put a person on the moon by the end of the 60s, right? Uh, and that was, called the can that was called the moonshot speech. Probably more famous or as famous as Ich bin ein Berliner speech that he made in 1962. But in any event, so Biden had a speech recently where he announced that the U.S. would be committed to reducing the mortality associated with cancer by at least 50% over the next 25 years. Uh, and that EPA would play an important role in, 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 in accomplishing that objective uh, and that's why that's called the cancer moonshot. So what is cumulative risk assessment? Well, cumulative risk assessment, in its simplest terms, is that you combine the risks from multiple chemical agents and, or stressors, and the stressors could include non-chemical agents. And the non-chemical agents are quite important uh, because they're, it, as, it, you know, as is the case, and it may be the case in other countries, a lot of the populations that live near chemical plants, you know, tend to be in a, a lower socioeconomic status than others. Uh, you know, the price of land is low or lower, and so therefore you do find communities uh, that might be in a lower economic uh, status. And uh, uh, top priority EPA is basically to provide protection for those communities. And they're called environmental justice communities. It's just another way of saying you know, people that live under more, you know, difficult circumstances than others. Uh, and it's, it, is, it is the case, and I think it's, you know, widely recognized that such communities often face a host of, you know, of pollution pollutants, uh, and, and, uh, and they have other difficulties that overlap uh, with the adverse effects of, po of poverty and other socioeconomic factors. Uh, you know, so, so for example, uh, uh, if you take, if you look at the uh, uh, biomonitoring data, uh, you can, you'll find uh, that people who live, live in these communities may actually have higher levels of, you know, certain uh, chemicals in, in, their, in their bloodstream or fluids. Um, you may find, uh, you know, increased incidence of diabetes in these populations as well as an increased exposure to chemicals that have been associated with diabetes, for example. So, so there is, I think, some growing body of evidence uh, that sort of uh, links um, environmental justice concerns uh, with the problems associated with exposure to both chemical and non-chemical stressors. And that's what cumulative risk assessment in its broadest con concepts is trying to protect against or address in some way. Now, TSCA does not re explicitly require EPA to conduct cumulative risk assessment, although there is a provision in TSCA which says that EPA may, they have the discretion to conduct a cumulative risk assessment. However, TSCA does require that EPA consider uh, reasonably available information and use the best available science to make its decisions, 
and that, that its decisions must be based on the weight of scientific evidence. And it's argued that for some chemicals, uh, the best available science may require a cumulative risk assessment. And that's the basic concept behind this. You get a concept of grouping, which as you all know is, is widely used now by the authorities in Europe, but you also include within that group not only chemicals that are structurally similar, but chemicals that function or believe to function by a similar mode of action. Uh, so uh, what do NGOs have to say? Well, the NGOs actually want EPA to go further. They want EPA not only to include um, chemicals that uh, are structurally similar or um, act by similar mode of action, they also want EPA to include non-chemical stressors, you know, things like uh, where you live, things like um, uh, you know, accessibility to health care, uh, things like habits, cultural habits, cultural dietary habits, things of that nature, uh, which consider non-chemical stressors. So be mindful of this. This is the Environmental Defense Fund is taking the lead, uh, but I'm sure that there are others, uh, such as Kebsec in Europe, that will also start thinking about this too and start pushing this concept. What's the industry reaction? Well, obviously, they could say that the current scientific tools are not up to the task uh, and that doing this uh, would basically be a political experiment. Uh, so Texas is also opposed to this, arguing again that EPA has no legal basis for requiring states to conduct cumulative risk assessments. Uh, California, on the hand, the blue state, you know, applauds these type of efforts. Uh, and I just sort of pointed out that in Biden's speech, if you were take, paying attention, the cancer moonshot speech, if you paying attention earlier, he argued that cancer does not discriminate red and blue. It doesn't care if you're Republican or Democrat. Beating cancer is something we can all do together. Anyway, that is that. <laughs> <laughs>